Okay, so welcome students for today's class. So, uh, uh, recall uh, in our last class what we discussed, we discussed about uh, the orbit stabilizer formula. Orbit stabilizer formula. Okay. Now what was that? Uh, you have a group G and acting on said X. Okay, and then we count the number of elements in X uh, in terms of uh, the fixed points uh, of G under the actions, obviously under the actions, and plus um, those are uh, not fixed points. So those are what? Those are um, all those xi such that uh, the stabilizer of gxi not equal to the full group and then order of g by order of the stabilizer which is nothing but the index of the stabilizer of xi in g right so this was uh, the orbit stabilizer formula we have given uh, little proof of that formula right now let me give some uh, non-trivial applications of this formula and uh, so, so we start with uh, uh, this famous theorem called the Fermat's little theorem I hope you already heard this theorem. You know what is the statement? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so I am got. I am going. I am going to prove the stronger version of this theorem. Okay, uh, like equivalent actually. But uh, uh, so what I am going to prove. I am going to prove that uh, that uh, in the an integer. And P be a prime number okay then n to the power p is congruent to n mod p. I, I hope uh, you know the definition of congruence if not so let me define here so we say a is congruent to b modulo or something whatever integer say n if n divides a minus b okay n divides a minus b means so that is you can write down a minus b in terms of some constant another integer times n okay for some uh, k belongs to z this is the definition of modulo uh, operation and you can easily check that this forms a equivalent relation on the integers okay so this is an actual equivalent relation equivalence relation Okay, so uh, so so you may have seen another version of Fermat uh, little theorem that tells you that if the series of n and p equal to one, then n to the power p minus one is congruent to one mod uh, one mod p, and these two versions are actually equivalent. For example. Uh, I mean, rather, rather my theorem is more stronger because if n divides p, then it is trivially true, right? If n does not divide p, or uh, this one, then n inverse existing say z mod z, and it is nothing but n power p minus one going to one mod p, right? So, so I will going to prove this stronger version. Now, let us see how how we are going to prove it using. Uh, uh, this uh, orbit stabilizer formula, this beautiful group, and uh, so so let me start with the group. My group G is uh, Z mod P Z, 
and uh, my set is what so uh, my set x is uh, this is already discussed in the example in the last class so x is uh, the speed to pull so x1 x2 dot dot um, say xp okay and um, what i can do so um, so this xis are um, so xis can be uh, any element so for example um, you choose any, any set of size chain so i i cannot this uh, so let me write down that xi maybe this is my set 1 2 3 okay so you can choose any any, any set of size n um, okay so uh, so now uh, obviously i know uh, what is the actions right so how the action look like so action will be um, that by the left shift operator right so g is acting on x by or right shift operator or whatever yeah that shift operator right that is so you have this one bar which is the generator of z mod pz and that acting on x1 x2 and xp by uh, say x1 goes to second place and so on and the last one comes to first place okay so this was the, the operator and uh, I, I choose my xi's are uh, uh, varying from a set of n elements so that can be it need not be like one to two up to n it can be anything okay it doesn't matter and then uh, you already ch check this is an actually um, group actions right this is group actions uh, because uh, this is cyclic group so it is enough to define on the generator right and now under these uh, these actions um, what we can say can you can you say say can you find out uh, the fixed points for example what about this set so fixed point of my g and this is by definition you remember uh, this is all those elements inside the set x right so here x contains elements of this form x1 x2 xp belongs to x such that um, as a what happens such that um, uh, this is fixed under any any action so so g so g dot these elements x1 x2 xp equal to same element x1 x2 xp for all g belongs to that g right now here our g is z mod pz right so so this uh, small g are nothing but uh, this is the modulo p so 1 bar 2 bar 3 bar like uh, p minus 1 number right so the question is that uh, uh, what are these elements what are these elements which will be uh, fixed by any elements of uh, the group g okay and the answer is um, you, you see that if this each of those exercises are same okay so so what 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 do you need to prove that you need to prove that uh, for any k bar these elements x1 x2 xp will be equal to x1 x2 xp for all this k bar element of g right did not be z so what does that mean that means uh, this uh, the fixed point should be those points which will be invariant under this kind of actions this kind of uh, rotation action shift of action right and the and and only only uh, so thus thus um, this was happened thus this x size x1 has to be equal to x2 this has to be equal to x3 right there is no other options 
so all those must be equal to same if they are same then it doesn't matter you are uh, sitting by one place or two place or three place or p minus one place all will be same right and those are actually elements of x which are actually fixed under every element of this is a very important thing for every element every element of the right so what does that mean that means so the question how many elements are there in that um, fix fix points fix sets of g set of fix points of g under the actions uh, these are actually exactly see this depends on how, how many elements are there uh, that x i can be x i can take so x i can take uh, uh, this either one see the values of x i are 1 2 3 up to n and uh, for each of these values you have this element right so so what does that mean that means this fix set of g contains element of this form x x x x all x such that your x is an element of the form 1 2 up to n right clear and thus uh, the cardinality of this set is nothing but n right okay so on the other hand uh, let, let me just ask yes what is the cardinality of x what is the cardinality of x now this is simple right for each of x i you have n many choices and then you have p many places and then this answer is n power p right so so you already have uh, two uh, parameters you already know so uh, now uh, so what is the orbit stabilizer formula tells you that tells you that cardinality of x equal to cardinality of fixed point of g plus uh, those um, g x i and such that g the stabilizer not equal to the full group right now this is already we know this is n power so p and this one also you know this is n and then this is some number right dxi okay now look at look at this uh, uh, this uh, stabilizer now for any uh, this g x i s so these are the subgroups of um, so th this is a proper sub right the proper subgroup of g this cannot be continued right but then what are the options g g is the not present right and uh, like when this theorem tells you that sub order of the subgroup reverse order of the group so the stabilizer has only two options either cardinality p or one but it cannot be p because it is not equal to the right so then it has to be identity there is no other choice it can be only identity right clear so you understand that the each for each such xi the stabilizer will be single concept identity and hence these sums are actually nothing but the sum of our p's right p p p p p p right what, what how many times right so thus thus uh, uh, these sums these uh, uh, g x i is not equal to g which is nothing but in power p minus n this sum is divisible by p right divisible by p right because each of these stabilizer is in singleton and order of the group which is p and you are taking uh, sums of p some finite liberty times so what are your final liberty times see so this is finite groups you remember t is finite x is finite which is finite so this sums is divisible by p and hence uh, hence uh, p divides in power, in power p minus p ah, 
so this is QED. This complete the proof, okay? Clear. So, so this is one of the elegant proof of Fermat's Celebrity Theorem that tells you that you have um, you, you, uh, that tells you that um, whenever you have natural number n and a prime, then n power p is congruent to n mod p, right? Yes. Yeah. So another elegant uh, application I will tell you about another elegant application. So this is one of the most important theorem also. And uh, let me write down that theorem is called uh, Cauchy's theorem. I hope you have heard this term Cauchy's theorem. Okay. Yeah, so Cauchy's theorem has many many proofs. Generally, people the classical proof is uh, using something called mathematical inductions on the order of the group or other things. But here we will use this uh, group actions and orbit stability formula to give you an elegant proof of this theorem. Now, what is what is the Cauchy's theorem tells you? It tells you that uh, let yeah so uh, G be a finite group, finite group, and P be a prime number prime dividing order of g okay so so what do you know i know that this is a finite group with some order saying and p is this so so, so maybe let me write down that uh, okay so let me write down the final conclusion then i will come back okay and the conclusion is that then G contains an element of order P. So, so, so nice uh, result, right? So, you have a uh, group which is final groups, and we have a prime. Uh, which is dividing the order of the group G, then the G must have an element of that order. Okay, so so that is so. Let me write down. So I suppose this is say n, and P divides n, then there exists uh, some G belongs to G, such that order of G equal to P. So this kind of mathematically you can say that. Okay. Yeah, so now Cauchy's theorem has uh, obviously uh, classical proof which involves uh, some some people use divided into commutative group, non commutative group, some people do it by uh, in, uh, mathematical inductions on the order of the group, right? But here we will use this fact that, uh, okay, so let me let me give you a proof. Which is an elegant group using group action. Okay, so I, I, I my, my uh, another group I am choosing the Z mod Z and which is acting on a set X. And uh, what is X here? So X is the set of the speed tuples X1, X2, X, P, but there is a twist. Twist is that uh, this X is uh, element of now G. G is given to you. G has n many elements, right? And not only that, this x1 into x2, their product is always identity. So I am choosing all those p tuples which are element of group G, like uh, that coordinates are entries are element of G, and the product of these coordinates are identity. See, one means identity of G here, so one G I should write. Okay, and obviously I know the actions. I know that Z mod P Z acting on X uh, via uh, same same thing, right? So Z mod P Z. Uh, obviously, so what is the action? So same actions which we discuss. So we have X one, 
xp and this will map to xp x1 student dot xp minus one the same x okay now another uh, question so uh, so we have I, some questions i can ask you and first question is that what is the cardinality of x how many elements are there in uh, this set x okay and now a simple observation tells you that see so you, you have those tuples see first of all um, you need to find out that how many such uh, uh, x i c so obviously for each of x i you have g n many choices right because order of the group is n so you have many choices but remember they have a relation uh, among them right so what is the decrease of freedom here so you can only choose p minus one many elements here and the pth one will be the fix that will be the inverse of the product of the rest right so so only you can choose so your degrees of freedom is actually p minus one so this is nothing but n to the power p minus one this is clear to everyone i hope this is clear so for each of x you have many choices once you choose n minus one p minus p minus one many elements the pth one will be fixed automatically because the product has to be equal to identity right so this is first observation now second observation the same thing i, I will ask you uh, or second question uh, uh, question number two uh, how this fixed point of g look like okay so again uh, it will be uh, this this uh, such that uh, obviously okay so so this with uh, this x1 x2 xp equal to identity and they are element of group g and also uh, for any i mean this is invariant under the actions so g dot this x1 x2 xp has to be equal to x1 x2 xp right this is for all g belongs to uh, sorry uh, uh, yeah all g belongs to z mod pz not capital g this is the element of z mod pz z mod pz is active and hence we already showed that uh, this x i x1 has to be equal to x2 has to be equal to xp right clear so what does that mean that means that this fix set of g is nothing but uh, all those tuples x x x x x such that x power p is also to identity and x belongs to that uh, group g clear this is the way uh, you define the uh, set x and the definition of fixed point ah uh, sorry uh, uh, there is a mistake so this is uh, this is not g this is z mod pz okay uh, z mod pz is acting so fixed point of z mod pz z mod pz okay so z mod pz is acting so a fixed point of z mod pz will be of this form and uh, one can easily now find out what is the cardinality of this set right so so uh, x x everything x okay so now cardinality of this set you already know right so how many uh, such elements are there of order uh, p now obviously one can ask a simple question whether this is non empty or not okay so now note that note that this fixed point of z not z is non empty right why non empty as the identity belongs to that identity of z identity of z belongs to z mod pz because uh, this is invariant under the actions of any element of z mod pz and also this one power p equal to one right 
So this is non empty set we already find out. Now let us use this Orbis Taylor formula. So again um, here also you, you have so so write down the formula formula tells you that this has to be equal to fixed point of z mod pz okay plus current of z mod pz is p by that in uh, here uh, what is that uh, stabilizer but stabilizer is also uh, one because uh, they are um, so this sums is over those uh, z mod is it of x size okay which is not equal to z mod pz and that is only one option so then has to be equal to identity right like zero bar there's no other subgroups right so 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 this on the left side this is nothing but in power p on the right side this is divisible by p so what does that mean that means this the cardinality of fixed point of z mod pz this is nothing but mod of x minus this sums that whatever the sums okay now this is n power p minus 1 right n power p minus 1 but this is also divisible by p and p also divides n so 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 thus what does that mean that means p divides fixed point of z mod pz clear p divides it okay so p divides uh, both uh, cardinality of x and also these sums so p divides both so p divides fixed point of this right so what does that mean that means you have at least p many elements inside that fixed point because it's non empty right identity is there and thus thus there there exist a non trivial So here G belongs to G non trivial means which is not identity, okay? Such that a non identity, you can say that non identity such that the order of the group G, order of that G is the P, okay? Clear? And this is this is the elegant proof of. Uh, Cauchy's theorem, one of the famous theorems, and uh, this theorem is very old, uh, one of the oldest theorem, the 1840s, 45, I think, around that time, Cauchy proved this theorem. Okay, and this is one of the elegant applications of uh, whatever we are doing with the actions. Okay, clear. Okay, now uh, I would like to uh, uh, discuss something more on uh, some other. Uh, some other applications using some other group actions right so now I will discuss about very one of the very very important uh, formula and this is called the class equation okay so so the setup is okay so uh, g is acting on x other other blah 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 thing now i am i am choosing my x is also g so g is a group and g is acting on g the uh, conjugation this is given to me what does that mean that means uh, you choose choose g and you choose g inverse uh, the action will be g g dash g inverse g and g dash and g. okay this is for all g and g dash belong to g this is actions okay conjugation actions okay now if i if i use these conjugation actions and if i have to uh, apply uh, the orbi stabilizer formula then how it look like so my set x will be g so i can count how many elements are there inside the set g and that will be of this form fixed point of g right plus uh, that uh, summation uh, is stabilizer right 
now let us try to understand what are in this case what are these fixed of g and what are the stabilizer how they look like okay yeah so what about uh, so so start with this what about this uh, fixed of g how this look like so this will be all those element of g belongs to d such that uh, or g dash belongs to d such that g dot g dash equal to uh, g dash for all g belongs to g right g is acting by this now what is this action the action is conjugation right so what does that mean that means this is collection of all those g dash belongs to g such that uh, g g dash g inverse equal to g dash for all g belongs to g right and what does that mean that means this is all those g dash belongs to g such that g g dash equal to g dash g for all g belongs to g what does that mean this collection of all those g dash which is which converts to the this as g dash right so what does that mean that means this is nothing but the center wow this is nothing but the center of the group g right see so so whenever whenever you replace uh, these actions by a special actions say conjugation uh, then you this set of fixed points of g under the actions will become the uh, center obviously center has a nice structure i can prove that this is actually uh, a normal subgroup of the group g okay in general this fixed point of g is is collect it, it has no nothing right see this subset of x you have no structures but for this group x equal to group g and uh, with this conjugation actions it becomes a very nice set so it's in our subgroup right which is the center of center of g clear now uh, let me ask another question so uh, uh, the question is that uh, what about uh, this given any x belongs to g what about that stabilizer like how the stabilizer look like the so stabilizer is uh, by definition all those g belongs to g uh, which fixes x right is that g dot x equal to x this is the by definition of stabilizer of x but this is nothing but uh, all those g belongs to g such that so what is the meaning of this action this means g x g inverse equal to x right now what does that mean that means all those g belongs to g which come out should x right g x equal to x g uh, it has also a very nice name it is called the you remember this is what is called this is called center okay so um, so i should say that uh, uh, center of x okay. is also a subgroup of uh, g we know that okay so so stabilizer become uh, sorry uh, um, so centralizer uh, it's called the centralizer what i'm saying centralizer centralizer of x so stabilizer become the centralizer and the fixed set of uh, g under the action become the center under the conjugation operation right and hence you, you can have the similar type of uh, uh, relation what i proved you remember that uh, okay so so recall this following uh, equivalent you remember what was we proved we proved that uh, okay so let me write so we proved that uh, um, some x belongs to uh, these fixed points of g okay uh, this if and only if 
that stabilizer of x equal to the full thing, right? Z for only. So what does that mean? That means uh, if it is not in self fixed point, then the stabilizer is uh, proper sub, right? But then what will be the form here? So here will be x belongs to center if you leave the centralizer of x equal to g right so what does that mean that means if centralizer is not equal to the full group g then x cannot be equal to the center right so 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 uh, then we can we can use that orbital formula by this so then orbital formula becomes that fixed point so let me write down yeah uh, here so the, this becomes center and the, this becomes centralizer right so you can write down this by uh, center of yeah. oh this not z this center just single center center of group g is cardinality plus those are not below the center those x does not belong to center and then you take the index of the centralizer okay and this is called the uh, the class equation okay so this is called the class the famous class equation okay so uh, so uh, uh, what do we find out? We find out that when G is acting on G via conjugation, then our obvious the formula has a nice form with this uh, normal subgroup, center, and the centralizer, those things. And I can write down a nice neat and clear relation among those, right? With their cardinalities. Okay. Now, again, the application. So, um, so let us do some applications. So applications of this class equation. Okay. So so uh, uh, the first the, the, the one of the most important applications is what suppose you have a group which is a p group like the p power n. Okay. Then Uh, center of that uh, the cardinality is bigger that is actually non trivial bigger than one that is there exist uh, some g which is non identity belongs to g is, is not identity element okay or non identity element such that G belongs to center. So you must have a non identity element which comes with everything. So this is one of the most important applications and how do you prove it? So so proof. Uh, so so uh, so you write down this uh, using the classic equation you write down this is G minus G sum of R um, this by centralizer okay and uh, uh, this x is sum of our distinct uh, representative such that this x are um, does not this x are does not belong to the center okay or centralizer is the full uh, centralizer equal to the full uh, center is a proper subgroup of uh, the group G, right now now you see the centralizer uh, the centralizer of an element is always a subgroup of G right uh, this is you can prove I, I hope we can prove it okay this is homework prove the centralizer is a subgroup of G and hence uh, using Lagrange's theorem like and this theorem you 
can show that uh, we can conclude that this order must divide order of the group G, right? But what is the order of this group? This is something P power n, right? The prime power. So what does that mean? That means this has to be some P power some m for for each of those things where m is strictly less than n. It cannot be full, right? So what does that mean? That means that this ratio is always divisible by p, right? This ratio is always divisible by p, and hence, hence, um, this sum over this x does not belong to zx center is divisible by divisible by the prime p okay p is the prime p is the prime okay now you check uh, g is also divisible by p because g is of the form p power n this is divisible by p so this whole sum is divisible by p and hence uh, p divides the order of the center and hence that there exists a non identity element which is not identity belongs to G such that that G belongs to the center. Clear? Yeah. This is very very nice simple example uh, applications. Okay, so I will talk about one more applications. So I can also give some uh, structure of some groups. So uh, so this is you can write down by this every group of order p square is abelian okay so what does that mean that means uh, that is any group is order p square is abelian abelian group means the commutative group right Okay, so now uh, and I will use the previous previous results to prove this thing. Now how to prove this thing? So uh, to prove this thing, uh, so the proof is simple also, not very difficult. So we start with the center. Center contains more than one element, right? Uh, because this is a P group. Okay as order of the group g is p square so center contains more than one limits right because uh, the, the, uh, what we just proved the center on of a p group center is always non trivial right so what are the options so thus the order of the center has two choices only either p or p square right now if order of the center is p square which is equal to order of the group g this implies the center itself is the, the full group g and thus g is abelian right? center like center is full group so g is abelian okay now what happen if order of the group order of the center is p is exactly uh, this now if order of the center is exactly p then k over so what does that mean that means i'm asking i'm saying that you you, you have exactly p many elements which come to each other right so so what is what is that uh, center right now uh, that means so uh, uh, then you you find out say some g belongs to uh, group and the center okay and you consider uh, that stabilizer the center uh, centralizer of g I consider centralizer of g c c okay so you now note that 
this uh, center is a uh, subgroup of centralizer of G. Why? Because every element which comes with every element of group, they also comes with G. So this is a subgroup of centralizer of this, right? So what is our equation? Then equation is like that: center is subgroup of centralizer, and centralizer is subgroup of the whole group, right? And we know that the cardinality of this is p, and this is p square. This is we know, right? Now, what are the options? The centralizer has two options only: either p or p square. Now, centralizer cannot be equal to p, right? Because g belongs to centralizer. Now, centralizer of g. This cannot be equal to the order of this. As G belongs to centralizer of G, but not in center, right? And thus, what are the what is the only option left? The centralizer of G has to be equal to the full thing, right? So what does that mean? The centralizer of the element G is nothing but the full group G. But what does that mean? If centralizer of the element belongs to the full group G, that means, so this means um, that uh, every every okay. So let me write down what is the meaning of this. So this means every element. Of G commutes with small G, okay, and thus G belongs to center because G commutes with every element, right? So which is again a contradiction, which is again a contradiction. Okay, now why we are getting these contradictions? So we are getting these contradictions because we assume that we assume this thing. We assume that uh, center is uh, this center has p many elements. Thus, uh, the center cannot be equal to p, and it has to be p square, right? And this has to be p square. Right, and hence center is nothing but the full group, so that G is abelian. Okay, so finally uh, we get that whenever you have a p group over a p square, then center is full group. So that means G is abelian. Okay, and that is also one of the application of all the stability formula and class equations, obviously. Yeah, so by this I will stop today's lecture. Tomorrow we will discuss more important theorems uh, using this uh, uh, class equation uh, using this Abstract formula and the group axis. Okay, so today I am stopping this.